Okay, so you know the drill. It's currently 1.40 a.m. PST, the morning of October 13th, Tuesday. As I record this video, I'm sitting beside my window. It's very rainy outside here in Vancouver, so it's some very nice, calm vibes for me recording this video that'll probably be up on the YouTube channel in about eight hours from now. So, I wanted to make a quick update on the Detroit Red Wings, because it has come to my attention that not only on the free agency signings part of the team are there pieces of news that we have not discussed here on the YouTube channel, but there are indeed some things that I wanted to get into involving the prospects as well. As we have noted throughout the past, the 2020 NHL entry draft was a very important part for this Detroit Red Wings offseason plan and their overall attitude towards the prospects that they saw. And it's not even just guys that we had in that 2020 draft that are doing extraordinary things back in their hometown countries, but a few guys that were taken in previous entry drafts too. So, today we're going over a few guys that we have discussed previously on the channel, guys like Lucas Raymond, guys like Jonathan Bergeron, and we're also going over the newest Detroit Red Wings signee at the time of this recording, Vladislav Nemesnikov. Now, the way that this actually came about was kind of funny, because Nemesnikov signed the day we made our Iser plan video. That was a video talking about the whole Steve Iser plan, the idea that Steve Iserman had for this Red Wings team when it came to free agent signings and its overall acquisition of assets. This was discussed earlier in the week, but the day we made the video, Nemestikov actually signed. Because I was asleep when that happened, I didn't make a video about it following up afterwards. So this is kind of where we're talking about Nemestikov over here. I offer my deepest condolences and apologies to the Red Wings fan base, but bear with me here. So, who is Vladislav Nemestikov? Well, Vladislav Nemestikov is the newest Detroit Red Wing, signed earlier in this week to a two-year, $4 million contract with an average annual value of $2 million. What you're getting out of here in Nemestikov is a 27-year-old forward. Yeah, and I just say forward because if you look at his position on Elite Prospects, he is listed as both a winger and a center, so we'll go with the assumption that he can play all three forward positions here. Nemestikov is a guy who actually has had a pretty successful tenure in the NHL thus far. With the Tampa Bay Lightning, he was a 35-40 point scorer with that team. Then he got sent over to the New York Rangers. He was a pretty good player over there, 31 points in 78 games played. Then he was sent over to Ottawa, where he actually did pretty well for a team that was one of the worst in the entire National Hockey League. And then we kind of know what happened afterwards. He was traded to Colorado. He was there as a rental because he was making a $4 million average annual value contract that expired in 2020. That expired, the Avalanche saw Nemestikov in the playoffs, he was pretty okay, 5 points, 12 games played, and now he is over with the Detroit Red Wings. As we noted, it's a 2 million average annual value for 2 years, and this is honestly a pretty good contract for a guy who you could realistically expect 30, maybe even 35 or 40 points out of if he gets the proper playing time especially with the flexibility of having this guy being able to play all four positions, that certainly allows you to do some creative things with your overall roster as a whole. He's a very well-rounded offensive contributor who's got a good shot, good playmaking, and he's able to actually play two-way somewhat too. He can just do pretty much everything on the ice that he would want a forward in his own zone and in the offensive zone to do, and that comes at a pretty nice price tag of $2 million a season. Sure, you could debate the magnitude of how well he's able to do these things, but at the very least, he was half a point a game in the postseason with the Avalanche, so there certainly will be a lot to look forward with Nemestikov here. Also, there is no trade protection on this contract. Meaning that if this guy is in a position where, let's say, he overperforms, he does incredibly well, he gets 40, 45, 50 points by the trade deadline, you can send this guy off for picks. You can actually use this as a haul for the Red Wings in actually allowing themselves to get younger assets. Because sure, Iserman noted how they wanted to go after picks and prospects and all that in this offseason, but he also noted that one of the main priorities of the Red Wings was to ice a team. And with all the signings that we talked about in the past, Stetcher, Grice, Bobby Ryan, John Merrill, and now Nemestikov too, they're doing exactly that. They're icing a team. And sure, the team may not be any good, they might not make the playoffs or whatever, but still, this is a team regardless, and it opens up the possibility of trading for more picks if any of these players are in a position to get traded. So, that is Vladislav Nemestikov. He is a very nice addition to this roster, as all the additions that CVY has made have been 
But now let's go over into our second part of this Red Wings news and updates video. We're talking about the prospects here because Lucas Raymond is a guy who was one of the most beloved Detroit Red Wings back at the 2020 NHL entry draft floor. He is the new guy in town. Fourth overall in the 2020 NHL entry draft, he was a guy who a lot of people said probably could go fourth, but I don't think too many people were actually expecting it. I know I was one of the guys who believed that Raymond could indeed go fourth overall, but I really thought that the Red Wings were going to take that Perfetti or maybe even that Marco Rossi, but it doesn't even matter because, hey, Lucas Raymond is a Red Wing now, and he's been doing incredible things with the SHLs for Orlando Hockey Club so far in the 2020-2021 season. Yes, I said 2020-2021. Spoiler alert, the guy's actually playing in the SHL already, and he's been given a much more significant and prominent role with the team than he had last season. A lot of people will take a look at Raymond and say, okay, he's skilled, he's done some very good things at the international level, etc., but what has he done in the SHL? 10 points, 33 games, this guy hasn't been doing nothing. Well... Calm your horses. The guy's at 4 points in 6 games played right now in the SHL, and he's an 18-year-old. 18-year-olds don't really play in the SHL in general, which is why his feat of 10 points in 33 games last year was impressive as a 17-year-old guy, but what he's done this year, hey, it's pretty good. This guy is exhibiting why he actually went fourth overall. Furthermore, in his most recent game where he ended up playing for the Furlunda Hockey Club against that Jonathan Bergeron playing for the Skelleftia AIK, he won in a shootout, and it was a very nice move. It's almost one of those patented Lucas Raymond type moves that he's pulled off a few times, where he comes in on the left side, he's a right-handed shot, so he kind of cuts into the middle, opens up the forehand, fakes the backhand for a split second, goes over to the forehand immediately, then goes low glove. And it's honestly a pretty effective move. He's used it a few times. He won the shootout here in this most previous game with that move. But if you're wondering on whether or not Lucas Raymond can actually come to the NHL, well, I have some bad news for you, my friend. Now, I will say this does have the potential to change, but I do believe at this current moment, Lucas Raymond is not allowed to play in the NHL for 2020-2021. The fact is, his contract in the SHL, there was a signing of that before the NHL draft happened, which made a potential NHL out clause not permittable. We made a video about this a few months ago, back before the draft actually happened, talking about Gundler, Holtz, Raymond, etc., and why apparently they're not allowed to play in the NHL for 2020-2021 should they be drafted and should they be selected. So the earliest that I believe at the moment we're going to be able to see Lucas Raymond is 2021-2022. But of course, I will say that if our understanding of the circumstances in the previous video was incorrect, then I'll correct things so. But to my understanding, it does not appear that Lucas Raymond can actually play in the NHL. So what we'll do is we'll see this guy go back over, have an Elias Pedersen-like SHL season, hopefully speaking, at least. I don't know if that's in him, but we'll see how good he is able to do in the SHL for this upcoming year. But we'll watch it in awe, and we'll see how this Red Wings prospect is able to do his thing. But when it comes to that game against the Skeleftia AIK, one player on that squad that has been absolutely tearing things up is fellow Red Wings prospect Jonathan Berggren. He's a guy who we did make a video about a few years ago. Oh my goodness, when did we make that video? A few months ago, earlier in 2020? Was it even last year? I'm not even too sure. But he's a guy who was drafted by the Red Wings in 2018. He's a while ago. 2018 second round pick by the Red Wings, 33rd overall. He is 20 years old. July 16 is the birthday. He was born in the year 2000, and he is second in SHL points, 11 points in seven games played for this very shifty, creative right wing, left wing player. It's a huge improvement from what he had last season, 12 points in 24 games played in the SHL. That was half a point a game. Now he is over a point per game, and he is second in the entire SHL in points behind Marek Rivek. So that is a very good sign to see a 20-year-old doing some really good things in the SHL, putting up some very team-dominating, league-dominating numbers and production. And for a guy who we will probably see in Grand Rapids sometime in the next few seasons, I'm very much looking forward to this because I was a fan of Jonathan Bergeron before he was even drafted, back when he was in the 2018 draft as a Junior 20 Super Elite player over a point per game, dominating that league as a 17-year-old. I was like, yeah, this guy's gonna be great. Somebody better take a chance on this guy, and the Red Wings did it, and he is absolutely tearing things up and paying dividends two years later. So we will definitely keep up with him as well as the story continues, but talk to me in the comments what you think about Nemestikov, Lucas Raymond, and Berggren, all this stuff we talked about the Red Wings here today. I hope you enjoyed this video, so that's Troll 99, and bye.